This is an interesting day because I'm emotional. Um, this veteran asked Jonathan, because of the space and the experience that he created, when the time came to be put into virtual reality. And that's an extremely profound statement for somebody at the end of life. And so for a provider to create that space for a veteran is truly incredible. And so uh, this is who will be speaking um, about his practice and his use of it. And you know, we can say thank you for what you do. And uh, with that, I'll hand it to you, sir. Thank you, Evan. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John, and um, I noticed that uh, the room got a little cold, so I just want to invite the opportunity for everyone, if you can or are able to, if you want to stand up and just kind of warm up for a second, I can spare a minute. <laughs> I'm a recreation therapist, so yes. <laughs> One of the things is that we have to observe the environment and, uh, and make it happen, right? All right. So my name is John, and feel free to have a seat when you're all warmed up. Uh, my name is John. I am uh, an, a recreation therapist. I am also known as the IT guy. So, uh, and I believe that everyone in every department, there's always that one uh, IT guru, right, that knows everything about technology. I'm not a guru. I just happen to know some things. So, <laughs> so I am the IT guy for the Phoenix uh, VA uh, Community Living Center, which is also known as the CLC. Uh, these are veterans who are in hospice care, palliative care, short-term rehab, long-term care, um, basically kind of like in a, in a nursing home environment. Sorry, pushing the wrong button. Uh, a little bit about recreation therapy. Recreation therapy is a systematic process that utilizes recreation and other activity-based interventions to address and assess the needs of the individuals. So basically using leisure-based treatment for anyone with, let's just say, uh, anxiety, PTSD, um, even just having a supplemental um, restorative exercise just to get their physical skills up to par, right? And so that is what recreation therapy is, is to bring back purpose for uh, anybody who felt like now that I have a new condition or, or an ongoing condition, I can no longer do um, my daily activities that I find enjoyable. And we want to bring that back to the veterans. So, um, and this is what we do. We use a, a recreation therapy assessment to get to know our veterans and then to also assess what is the veteran-centered goal. We want to focus on the veteran-centered goal. We can tell you, hey, we could do this many programs, but what is your goal? We want to focus on the veteran themselves. One of my favorite quotes is, um, um, if you want to take away from what recreation therapy is about, is a physical therapist will give you the strength to get out of bed. An occupational therapist will teach you how to get out of bed, but a recreational therapist will give you a reason to get out of bed. So. <laughs> And just a little disclaimer, I want to let everyone know if I mention any uh, names of any headsets, I'm not endorsing or anything, I'm just letting you know what headsets I've been using. And also I want to uh, throw out there, I know some of the speakers have mentioned, um, virtual reality is not in place of therapy, but simply a tool to use in your interventions. So if you're just watching someone using virtual reality, that's not therapy. For me, I provide guidance, I provide prompting, I provide uh, direction, and then I want them to focus on what their goal is. 
I love my little effects on the PowerPoint, so I'm very proud of that right now. So, uh, so I uh, wanted to share a little bit about Mr. Tito. And um, fun fact, a year ago this month, Mr. Tito is our CLC Veteran of the Month for June of 2023. Um, that's one of the programs that we do in recreation therapy for our community living center, is that we have all the staff in CLC vote and nominate who they believe is the veteran of the month and then our medical media team takes a professional picture and then we put their picture on our wall uh, veteran of the month and to recognize how well they're doing it in their therapy and programs so i wanted to just kind of honor mr tito here with his uh, veteran of the month picture and a little bit about mr tito uh, one day we uh, there's an article link here, and if, you, if you're able to get a copy of uh, my presentation, that will be the link of the news article that Evan Davis was uh, mentioning. Um, so one day we were in a care plan team when we talk about veterans' treatment and how they're doing, or you know either uh, their progress or breaking, uh, breaking the news to them. And unfortunately for Mr. Tito, we had a care plan for him, and we told him, um, you know, we noticed that your health is starting to decline, and I just, we just want to let you know to, if you want to reach out to family members, um, if you want to uh, get some things in order, um, now's the time while you're, you know, alert and oriented, and you know, we just want to help you uh, be comfortable and and prepare you. And one of the things he said, well, that sucks, you know. And then he, you know, he said that, like, one of my wishes was that I can get better and go back to my hometown. And I guess, uh, guess that's not happening. So, um, and he really wanted to go back to his hometown. So I want you to just kind of look at the pictures. That, those are screenshots actually taken from um, his experience. And that's him with the headset on. So this is what he said. I wish I could visit my hometown, which is the Virgin Islands. And he says, now I can see that that will never happen for me from here on out. So, and I told him, well, Mr. Tito, let's not, let's not give up. Let's not give up hope right now. What if I told you that we have the technology to take you back home? Would you do it? And he's like, yeah, of course. I'll, I'll do anything. And I just want to give you an idea. This is a veteran who uses a flip phone and um, it wasn't able to connect to uh, the internet. And number one, it was one of those old flip phones that the battery lasts for like a week, you know, not like only like 10 hours. Uh, so, you know, I like to help him out. I help him uh, dial to his son that's in New York, uh, make sure that he gets his phone call with his son um, whenever possible. And so I told him, you know what, let's go ahead and try VR out, would you be willing to do it? And you would think someone with, you know, who needs help with their cell phones, they say, oh, no, I wouldn't do it, right? No, Mr. Tito's like, I will do anything to go back home, please. And I was like, okay, let me just kind of letting you know what to expect in virtual reality, what, what to expect, uh, what kind of equipment I'm going to use. You're going to have this device over your head. Is that okay? And he said, yes, yes, I'll, I'll do anything, please. I just want to go home one last time. So I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and do it. I put on the virtual reality on him. Um, and then I put it on, and then we were soaring through Virgin Islands. And as soon as you know it, he started to say, I know those trees. I know that beach. My wife and I would go down that beach right there, right there. You know, and he would just start sharing his memories. As he's soaring over uh, Virgin Islands, he started to sing his favorite songs. We would play his favorite playlist over a Bluetooth speaker. 
And at the very end, like at the end of the session, he says, I never felt that much closer to home than I do now. And I said, we're not going to stop here. Let's visit home a few more times while we still can. Is that okay? And he said, yes, let's do it. So we set up a few uh, sessions. We went, to, uh, we went to his hometown a few more times. And one of his last requests from our last one-to-one -one session was, when the time comes, can I ask you a favor? And I said, sure, Mr. Shido, anything. What's going on? When I'm passing away, can you put this over my head and let me fly over my hometown as I'm passing away? I told him I can't make any promises, and I, don't, I, I, I will do my best. But I can, prom I can promise you I will do my best. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to... <laughs> trying to control the waterworks here so uh, but like I told you uh, I told him I'm going to do my best and he says that's all I ask and that is the veterans dying wish is to fly back home on his last moments of life and we want to make sure we can provide that for our veterans at the Phoenix VA so I want to kind of brighten up the note. I don't want to end you guys uh, on that note, but uh, so I want to share about Mrs. G as well. Mrs. G uh, wanted to um, be more active. She wants to lose some weight. She wanted to go to the gym, but she was afraid of that gym intimidation. And so she signed up for a CrossFit adaptive sports class and has been going to CrossFit. She's been actively um, going to every exercise class that we have. And then one time what we were like, you want to you want to try VR? And she's like, sure, sure, sure. Why not? And then like and then one day she came in with uh, with her walker. And I said, hey, like I've seen you exercise in our CrossFit class. What's, what's with the walker? I was just wondering. And she's like, I don't, I don't really have a balance issue. It's just a sense of security. I just, wanna, I just want something to lean on. I just want something to lean on. And I said, oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I was just wondering, is it okay if once you're in the VR, I just move it slightly? Is that okay? But you said no balance issues. Are you sure? And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I can walk fine. I just, I just want to feel safer. So I'm like, okay. So we put her on VR CrossFit, and uh, and so she started like exercising. She's hitting all these balloons. She's uh, you know just kind of walking over through loops and everything. And she was like, "Wow, like that that made me sweat more than anything. Like that made me sweat in three minutes than thirty minutes of CrossFit." And I, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, uh, you know what? You are welcome back anytime. And she was like, this is better than a gym membership. Can I just keep coming here? Like, there's no judgment here. I feel safe. And look how far her walker is. She, like, she literally was taking a step back. And also, once you're out of the zone, it also tells you to take a step back. So that kind of helped. So, uh, but, yeah, she said that, like, wow, this makes me move. I am sweating more in 10 minutes of VR, in 10 minutes of VR than an exercise group, you know. And then this also motivated her to look into gyms because she developed that confidence that she can be more active, you know. She developed that confidence that she doesn't need to lean on a four-wheel walker if she doesn't need to. So after the VR session, she took off her headset and she looked at her uh, walker and she was like, oh, I didn't need my walker. And I was like, yeah, I had confidence in you, and I think you did great. You know, you didn't fall. That's even better for me. So, you know, but she was like, yeah, I had fun. Thank you for this opportunity. And I was like, I'm glad you, you made it. So, 
Um, if you have a phone with you, feel free to take out your phone and scan my QR code. If you have any questions, uh, you'll see a yellow link that will pop up on your screen on your camera mode. Uh, feel free to add my contact uh, card. Um, I created a digital business card so that way uh, I don't run out of business cards and then you will save your uh, save my information automatically on your phone. Uh, but one of my favorite recreation therapy quotes, and I'll leave off with this, is that recreation's purpose is not to kill time, but to make life. Not to keep a person occupied, but to keep them refreshed. Not to offer an escape from life, but to provide a discovery of life. And I'll leave off with that. Thank you.